Yes, welcome to Progressive Soup. My name is David Stevenson. I'll be the host of the show. And with us we have uh, one of uh, one of the members of the Bethel Garden Club. I'm also a member, but uh, Gretchen is a member of the Garden Club likewise. And uh, she has a very interesting hobby that she's going to tell us about and uh, treat us to some very intriguing and important information about bats. Gretchen, first of all, um, introduce yourself and uh, tell our audience who you are, where you came from, and uh, what brought you to this point in time. Thanks, Dave. Actually, thank you for having me. Um, We definitely want to let people know about bats in the community and what's happening with them and how they can help save them. Uh, We started, we noticed we had bats in the eaves of our house. And so we got interested in them and we started talking about them. And then once they started dying off, we got involved with the Department of Environmental Protection to see what we as homeowners and as just community citizens could do to help protect them and to save them. And that's how we got involved with learning about this white nose syndrome that has affected our cave bats in this country and in Canada. Um, So we've been working with the DEP for about 10 years now. Um, We've had a colony of bats at our house for about 10 to 15, probably closer to 15 years. Um, And I just love them. I like dealing with them. I like everything that they do. And so we're just, I'm here today to help get the point across on what is happening with our bats. So our bats... Mice with wings, or what What exactly are bats? Um, bats are actually furried mammals. They are the only mammals capable of flight. Um, they are very m- much more related to us. They're their own species, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but they're much more related to human beings than people understand. They are not flying rats. They are not related at all to rodents. Um, so we have a lot of things to go over here. Hopefully we'll get it, get people involved and want to help save them. So you brought along, you brought along a, a visual of what a bat actually looks like, the bones inside of it. And uh, I'm going to... This is actually just a little bat. Uh, kind of shake them. It kind of gives you the size... Um, of a, that would actually be the size of a large brown bat. So this is a full-grown brown bat? That would be a large, full-grown brown bat, except he doesn't have his wings. I do have a little Hilda here, I call her. This would be more the size of a one of our bigger bats, tree bats, would be about that size. Um, she's just my little buddy. She's not. I'm not allowed to handle real bats. You have to be fully licensed mm-hmm. to be able to handle bats. So I just bring Hilda with me. Um, so how do, what, uh, tell us about some different species, some different varieties of bats, and how they range in size and if the behavior is similar one to the other to the other? Well, if you don't mind, let's start with this white nose syndrome. That's yes. what b- actually brings me here today. Uh, white nose syndrome, or uh, WNS, um, is a disease affecting hibernating bats. Uh, so far, it has not um, affected our tree bats because there are hibernating bats, which are called cave bats, yeah. and there are tree bats that migrate every year. Ah, Um, So the white nose syndrome is affecting our bats here in the United States and Canada. Um, It is a fungus that thrives in cold, humid, damp conditions, which that's a perfect cave cave, for you. Uh, It was first documented in upstate New York in 2006-2007. It has spread rapidly across the United States and Canada. Um, the bats that are exhibiting the white nose syndrome um, are v- having very uncharacteristic behaviors um, during cold winter months when they should be hibernating. Mm-hmm. They're finding them flying around outside. They're finding them clustering at the cave openings. Um, and bats have been found sick and dying in unprecedented numbers um, around the caves and the hiberniculums. Um, in the state of Connecticut, 90 to 100% of the cave-dwelling bats are gone. 
They have died. So 90, very close to all of them. Absolutely. In some caves, it is 100%. And throughout the United States and Canada, over 7 million bats have died. That's a lot of bats. Um, As I said, the fungus was introduced into a cave in upstate New York by a spelunker that had come back from Europe with this spore on his equipment, did not properly clean his equipment on his return or her return, um, brought this spore into a cave, and it has now created havoc. Um, the, The bats themselves, they're not sure if this is the disease is actually killing them or the fungus is just system systematic of the problem yeah. because they do wake up during their hibernation and they'll lick themselves and clean themselves so they're not sure if ingesting it is what's killing them or just the fungus itself is killing them whether it's airborne or whether they have they're actually correct um, definitely is airborne because it is a spore, yep. so it definitely will go airborne. But the bats are now bringing it from cave to cave, as are humans bringing it from cave to cave to cave. Um, so they've um, they've actually there's lots of laboratories along with state and federal biologists that are investigating the fungus and seeing what they can do. But as of this airing. They still do not know how to cure this. So f- for our bats, it's, it's a terrible thing for our bats. The bats in Europe have developed an immunity to it, so they're no longer affected by it. Yep. But our bats have not built an immunity to it yet, so it is killing them. We were talking about before the show about how this, this can happen in, uh, it happens in, in with people where the, for instance, the, uh, the Spanish, the conquistadors went to, um, the conquistadors went to, uh, South and Central America and brought along with them, um, things that they were immune to over, because of centuries of being exposed to it. But the, uh, the Aztecs, the Incans, the Mayans, they had not been exposed to those things, so no, built-in protection, correct, and they suffered terrible losses because of that. Sounds like it's basically the same thing. Absolutely. Our bats just have no immunity to this fungus right now. So it is killing them at an alarming rate. Um, and, you know, everybody says, oh, why should we care about bats? Yeah. Well, let me tell you why we should care about bats. Bats pollinate more at night than bees and birds do all day long. So our bats are pollinating. It's going to have a huge impact on the biodiversity of everything. They're the, lar- are the single most night predator in the sky, flying and eating insects. Yep. Um, they can actually eat 2,000 2, to 6,000 insects per bat per night. That's a lot of, that's a lot of bugs gone. That is. Um, they can eat their body weight and food a night. So if we were to do that, you would have to have a stack of pizzas as tall as yourself and eat it all, just to give you an idea of how much... Even with pizza, that's a, that doesn't sound very appealing. No. <laughs> and it's, people don't see it now, but it yeah. is going to have a definite effect on our ecosystem. Yeah. Um, because the, you know, with the same problem we're having with bees, bees are dying at an alarming rate too, and they're still not absolutely sure what's causing it. So if we lose bats, we're going to see a big impact. I already see an impact in the bugs and the, mm-hmm. the things at night. So um, it's, it's terrible. And I'm just here to make sure people understand they're not rats. They're good for your environment they eat lots of bugs they're adorable i know people say oh they look like little rats but if you ever saw a bat up close they don't look like little rats i don't know if we can get this in but he looks kind of vicious here but he's i'm holding him in between my two fingers so that gives you an idea it looks big but they're not very big that's amazing their teeth look very sharp they are very sharp but their teeth are so tiny they can barely break skin so full grown they're they're kind of this size approximately that's a big but that would be a big bat with this is a you mentioned uh, was this a, a fruit bat would be this Insect big? eating bat. Okay. Fruit bats are a little bit bigger. Those are the bigger ones. Yes. Okay. They're furried, warm blooded mammals. They are not flying rats. Um, they're not even related to rodents. 
at all. Um, they're their own order of mammals, actually. Um, I always get this word wrong. Cypro... Cyroporter. Oh my God, there you go with those $100,000 yes. words. <laughs> Meaning hand wing. <laughs> oh, okay. That's what that means, hand okay. wing. Um, they are very social animals, yep. creatures. They live together in a roost, is what their home is called. Females and young usually live together. Um, and the males will stay with their moms for a while, and then they kind of like go off and become bachelors. But the younger males will hang out together. Um, the bones of a bat's arms and legs are similar to those of a human's hand, arms, legs. The fingers are extended and connected by a leathery elastic, which is kind of sort of like what we have between our thumb and oh, okay. index fingers. So it's, it's a skin. It's not, you know, just yeah. like we have. And yet, um, but it extends all the way out to the, to the tips of their... Uh... Correct. And from their bodies to their wings. Their thumbs are free and connected by a leather, you know, again, the wing membrane. Yep. It has a little claw on it for, for grasping, but it is an opposing thumb. Their hands are exactly like ours. Oh, opposing thumb, wow. five fingers. Um, they have five digit. They have marticulpals. They have radiuses. They have humerus. Um, their legs have a knee a femur, a fibula, a tibula, and a foot. All the kinds of bones you hear about in the human body. Exactly. They have collarbones. They have pelvises. They have a rib cage. They have a spine. They have, if you look at their little bodies, you would almost think you're looking at, the, you know, a little tiny person. They have a mandible. So mm -hmm. they're, you know, they're nowhere near related to rats. And I wish that's one of the myths that people would forget about, that they're really good. Um, they cannot stand upright like a human can because they have a very small pelvic girdle, so mm -hmm. they cannot stand up. They hang upside down nearly all the time, eating, drinking, I socializing. You, when you actually showed, showed that bat off, you actually were holding it upside down. Yes. That's the standard, that's the standard, standard. way they travel? The they, yeah. For everything. Yeah. Um, blood doesn't rush to their head like it would for us because oh. they don't weigh enough to, for gravity to affect their oh, circulation. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. So, I was wondering, you know, because, you know, obviously if we, we hang upside down for any period of time, it's going to be oh, yeah, you're, a, lot, a lot lightheaded no, plus. They don't weigh enough to have it affect them. So that's how they spend most of their time. They use their wings and the skin around and their arms and their mouths to catch insects in flight. Um, bats have babies called pups. Yeah. They nurse them just like a mammal, any mammal would nurse them. Um, babies weigh 25% of the adult. Oh, so Wait. they're pretty good size when they... They're very well, good relative. size. Even though they're very tiny... Correct. They're a pretty good if percentage. If we had a weight. baby that big, it would be the size of about a three-year-old toddler. <laughs> wow. So imagine that, ladies, <laughs> to be able to have babies like that. Um, the first few weeks of their life, the yep. baby stays attached to their mom all the time. They have special little claws that keep them hooked to mama. Yep. Um, because in that first few weeks of their life, mom teaches them everything they need to know. Where to sleep, where to eat, where to potty, where to find the best food, where to find home, where to find the cave. If in those first few weeks the mother and the baby separate, the baby will surely die. Because they cannot survive without their mother just like our babies cannot survive without us. Um, if a baby is found in that first few weeks, for some reason mom has dropped it or whatever. Yeah, what do you do? You would never, it would never be able to go back to the wild again. Mm. It would have to, have to be a captive baby bat now for the rest of its life because it wouldn't know where to go or what to do. And you have to feed it with a dropper. Absolutely. Well, they... Um, and they keep them as pets. Absolutely. They make great pets. They're very, very intelligent creatures, very intelligent. Um, bats actually live 20 to 30 years. The oldest one is a, uh, was a fruit bat yep. over in, uh, let me think, I forget the exact name of it. Um, in Europe, it just died and it lived to a ripe old age of 41. Whew. 
So they live a long, long time. Yeah, it's way longer uh, than any cat or dog. Absolutely. And they're like I said, they make great pets. Um, they consume a lot of agricultural pest, um, like cutworm and corn borer moths and potato beetles and grasshoppers. Um, a lot of the mosquitoes and similar people bugs and things yeah. um, are eliminated much more quickly by bats than they are by birds. So at night, you, the more bats you see, you've got a really good environment so for them. So you mentioned them, that so. uh, they, they take care, they eliminate more insects than birds and... Uh they pollinate more than oh, birds and bees more, combined. That's what I'm thinking. Pollinate more than birds and bees Absolutely. combined. Absolutely. While they're in the process of taking care of the things that are that are damaging to uh, to uh, yes. the, the crops we grow. They are. You mentioned that some. You mentioned about some of them being um, some of them being migratory and some of them not being migratory. That is correct. With the ones that are not migratory, because you mentioned about how it, the the disease has been transferred, the syndrome has been transferred from cave to cave. Correct. Have they found that? Um, have we found that uh, that uh, the ones that are not migratory have been safer because of that? Because they don't go from cave to cave or from location to location. Yes. Okay. Tree bats have not been affected by white nose syndrome. It is only the the cave bats that have okay. been affected. Um, and then we have. Um, there are two types of bats, in, um, tree roosting bats, which mm-hmm. we just talked about, yeah. um, and those are migratory. Yeah. And then we have the cave bats, and the cave bats are the ones that hibernate, and those are the ones affected by the white nose syndrome. Um, there are almost 1,200 different species of bats throughout the world. Only eight species live in Connecticut. Um, the smallest of the bats is the kitty's hog-nosed bat. Mm-hmm. And that little bat is also known as the bumblebee bat. It is about, it, it weighs about as, uh, the, uh, it weighs about as much as a dime. Yeah. Um, and it has a six-inch wingspan. So imagine its wingspan is about that big. And <laughs> the bat is about this big. Wow. Literally looks like a bumble. And the largest bat is a Malayan, um, is the Malayan flying fox, mm-hmm. which can weigh up and over two pounds, and it has a six-foot wingspan. Huge by comparison, but still, Huge. but still only two pounds, which is which is relatively light. It is. There, it, it's not very big, and that is luckily a fruit eater. Yeah, the great big one. Yeah, seventy um, percent of bats are insect eaters. Yep. Yeah. Um, tropical species eat fruit and, and drink nectar. Mm-hmm. Um, some bats eat fish and frogs, and some bats eat other bats. Hmm. Um, which we do have one of those species in the state of Connecticut, and it's called the horay bat. Um, there are three species of bat that feed on blood, but we do not have any vampire bats in Connecticut. Um, Most of the bats are in South America that are that drink blood, and they don't typically search out humans. They're more animals, and they drink all of a teaspoon of blood a night, maybe. <laughs> yeah, we had talked about that the last time you were on yes. the show, about the, the vampire bats yes. and uh, the, the, the tiny, tiny amount. It's probably, I would imagine... Um, Probably a little bit more blood than a mosquito will take out of you or Correct. take out of another animal, but not significantly more. No. And they, they, their main source of food is cattle and, you know, smaller okay. animals that are, you know, standing there just for the taking. And that would be so, cattle, exactly. Cattle just, just sort of ha- hanging around and probably, you know, it probably would move if, it, if they were losing a, a, a large amount of blood, but apparently Correct. they're not, so it doesn't make any difference to them. And the bite is so tiny. You know, the bats are so tiny. Even mm-hmm. the little vampire bats are very tiny. Yeah. So they, you know, they, the cattle probably don't even realize they're getting bit. And then they put in a coagulant in there, and it helps make the blood flow. And they lick up a little bit, and then they're good to go. And home they go. Um, the species of bats that we have in Connecticut, um, five of them are... are um, cave bats. Mm-hmm. We have the big brown bat, which the big brown would be about this size. 
And so he's good size. And then add his wings to him. And he's about five or six inches long. He would only weigh about a half an ounce, maybe. Wow. Very tiny. Um, and his wingspan would be about 12 to 16 inches. Mm -hmm. So he's got a pretty decent wingspan. Um, they can fly about 40 miles an hour. Oh, so they're very fast. Wow, and that is. the big brown has now taken over as the the more of them in the state than the little brown, only because the little brown has been so devastated by the white nose syndrome. You had mentioned a, a cave. I'm, I'm thinking it was up up in uh, the Southbury area, maybe. Yes, where they they had gone from literally, I think the thousands. Numbers, the, yeah, maybe up to like a hundred thousand, and down to about down to about ten percent of that. Yes, that cave. Well, as far as the Department of Environmental Protection is concerned, we no longer have cave bats in Connecticut. They have become extinct. They're so they're so few they're of them. Because they're so devastated by this white nose, so they have actually said. And so that's why, if you have a roost and you know where the roost is. Let us know. We can come count and keep track, and um, you can volunteer yourself if you'd like to get involved. So they like to get a good count. And then the little brown is about half this size. Um, and like I said, he's really taken a beating from the white nose syndrome. And he's only about two to four inches, um, and he weighs about an eighth of an ounce. And his wingspan is about nine inches. Um, and that used to be the m most numbered bats we have, but not anymore. Um, and then there's the eastern long-eared, mm -hmm. um, also hit very hard by the white nose syndrome. Um, the tricolor, not very common, um, so we're not sure how hard it's been hit because they're not very common in the state anyway. Um, and then the Indiana bat, and this is already an endangered species. Um, it hasn't. It's. It was seen here recently hibernating, and I believe it was in the Southbury area. Yeah. Um, and prior to that, we hadn't seen it in decades. So mm. again, not easy to get a count on it because they haven't been around for so long. Um, and then the tree bats that we have are the Hore bat, which is the biggest bat. He's real yeah. big. He's about six to seven inches with about a 15-foot wingspan. Yeah. Um, and he happens to like other bats. Yeah. So he will definitely eat the other bats. Do they um, travel into caves to get to, to feast? No. They wouldn't go into the caves. They'll only they get them when they're out at, out at night. Okay. Bats can only eat on the fly. So they have oh. to be flying to catch. And then we'll eat. And it's really hard for a bigger bat to get a littler bat. Yeah. Because it can't go in. And bats don't fly like birds. Bats need to be up high. Mm -hmm. They need to drop and catch air under their wings to be able to fly. Yeah. They cannot take off from the ground. They cannot just take off like birds. So it makes it hard. Um, the other tree bats that we have are the the red tree bat which people see a lot and they're very distinctive because they are very you know like the color of your shirt so they're very yeah. very easy to spot um and and they're much more common than the other two tree bats mm -hmm. and then we have the silvered hair not very common um, and again, most of them are primarily insect eaters, except the Hori. He does, yeah. he is a little cannibal, and he'll eat the little pipsal. Now, I know you focus here in Connecticut, but how, how quickly and how far is this white nose syndrome spread? White nose syndrome has spread all the way across the country. Yeah. It has been reported all the way into Texas. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, it has spread up into Canada. So it, and considering it's only been eight years yeah. that it was introduced into our caves and has pretty much wiped out our entire population of cave bats, it's pretty fast moving. So that's why everybody is very up in arms and very, very concerned about very, that. Sure. Very concerned about it. Um, let me just dispel some of the myths about bats. Mm -hmm. Bats are not blind. 
Actually, bats have wonderful eyesight. Well, they have. Do they have eyesight, or do they use sonar? Do they? No, they have eyesight. They do. Okay. They have great eyesight, and they rely on their vision for long distance mm-hmm. orientation. Yeah. Um, for short distance, they use exactly the same method as dolphins: the echolocation. Oh, okay. Yeah. And they are very good at it. They can ping something, and they'll know exactly where it is. Um, Detection, pursuit, and capture of an insect takes less than one second with a bat. So they can go bang, 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 and they have it. Um, The bats do not multiply like rabbits. They are very slow multiplying. They only have a pup a year, Mm -hmm. maybe sometimes twins, but they do not produce very fast. Um, They're not attracted in hordes to other bats or scent. Um, they won't fly into your hair. If a bat's flying around you, chances are really good there are bugs around you. Let them do their job. They won't hit you. Now, what can we do, if anything? Is there anything we can do to help protect them, help them, do something to, to, to help slow or prevent this, uh, this disappearance of these bats? We don't know yet, only because we, we don't know how to deal with the white nose syndrome yet caves are being closed to people because they don't want you in a cave if there's a hibernating roost in that cave yeah so they are keeping people out of the caves they are making sure that people understand that if you are in and out of caves you clean yourself up you clean your equipment so you're not spreading the spores um if you find a dead bat obviously do not touch it put on a pair of gloves Try to take some close-up pictures of it, especially if it's banded. Yeah. Um, and call the DEP. Oh, banded! It's got. It's been identified with a band. Correct. The same way that we do birds sometimes. Correct. Um, if you find a live bat, again, don't touch it. Um, if you ca- if it's a baby, put that baby up nice and high someplace. Mm-hmm. Put a warm bottle next to it. And mom will come and find it. If it's there the next day, call the DEP and they will come and take it away for you. There are chemical repellents that you can use, but it's not suggested. There are exclusions that you can do to get the bats out of your house and prevent them from coming back in without using chemicals or anything else like that. We're going to have to break it off there. Thank you for joining us, Gretchen. You're welcome. And you've uh, given us a lot of of food for thought about our, our friends, the bats. Thank you for joining us. And I'd like to thank Alice's oh, Flower quick Shop. Quick shout out to Alice's Flower Shop. and uh, For a beautiful arrangement for our table. In Bethel. Well, well worth your time going there. Uh.